Imagine discovering that your parents were not even the same species. That's exactly what geneticists studying ancient DNA recently found when they uncovered the remains of a young girl whose mother was a Neanderthal and father was a Denisovan. In this video, we'll delve into the fascinating story of this ancient hybrid girl and what it means for our understanding of human history. None of the prehistoric peoples that researchers have investigated have left behind mysteries as complex as the Denisovans. Only a few small fragments of bone and teeth, all of which would fit neatly inside a cigarette package, have ever been discovered from this long extinct species. However, these fragments of fossil evidence imply that Denisovans had a significant impact on modern humans. According to research, Denisovan DNA makes up up to 6% of the genes now present in contemporary New Guineans and 3-5% of the DNA of Aboriginal Australians. It is also thought that Tibetans passed on the gene that permits them to thrive at high elevations. This material reveals one thing. Contemporary humans met Denisovans tens of thousands of years ago and interacted with them sexually. It is a shocking finding that prompts a lot of fundamental inquiries. Who were the Denisovans, exactly? How did they appear? And how did they relate to the Neanderthals, who were their closest evolutionary relatives? Did they possess the same art and tools as Neanderthals? Due to the scarcity of the Denisovan fossil record, researchers currently have few answers to these issues. With support from the European Research Council, a new project called Finder Fossil. Fingerprinting and identification of new Denisovan remains from Pleistocene Asia, aims to correct this and revolutionize our understanding of the Denisovans and their interactions with both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Project leader Katarina Duca from the Max Planck Institute in Jena, Germany, and a visiting at Oxford University, said that the goal of the research is to determine where the extinct species existed, when they came into touch with contemporary people, and why they perished. However, a fundamental issue with Denisovan studies is the scarcity of remains. The only known source is Denisova Cave in Siberia, where their namesake remains were originally discovered in 2010. Only a small number of fossils, along with a few Neanderthal parts, have ever been discovered there. Tom Hyam, consultant to finder and deputy head of Oxford University's Radiocarbon Accelerator Unit, describes the location as a wonderful site. Because the inside is chilly, DNA in bones does not break down too much. However, hyenas and other animals there have gnawed away almost all of the bones. Denisova's cave floor is thus covered with small, unrecognizable bone bits. You cannot tell whether a piece comes from a mammoth or a sheep or a man or woman, Haim continues. Only a very small percentage will be humans, but they are worth looking for since they could know so much. Current methods for locating bone fragments entail the laborious process of DNA extraction and sequencing. That takes too long, according to Haim, to be useful. Here, there are tens of thousands of bone fragments. Share your thoughts on this fascinating discovery in the comment section below. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content like this. Duca and Haim will, however, use a novel technique known as zooarchaeology by mass spectrometry, or zooms. The method, which was created by Mike Buckley at Manchester University and is based on food science research, takes use of the fact that collagen, a protein fiber found in bone, can last for tens of thousands of years. Zooms can decipher the structure of collagen which functions as a chemical barcode to determine which main mammal group gave rise to a specific bone. This makes it perfect for distinguishing between animal and human remains. We requested samples from Anatoly Derevyanko and Michal Shunkov, who oversee the cave excavations, and they provided us with a large bag filled with fragments of bone. According to Doka, all of the bits were thought to be unidentified. The group started preparing the bones. From each, a 20 milligram slice was taken, put in a test tube, and given an identifying number. Three months later, 150 samples were ready. Therefore, Duca and Haim requested a volunteer for the project among their graduate students. As part of her master's research, Sametha Brown, an Australian student, agreed to work on the bones. Brown began the tedious process of cutting and labeling microscopic slices from each bone fragment over the course of the next several weeks. She prepared around 700 samples in the end. These were afterwards sent to Manchester for examination at Buckley's lab. 
The findings revealed that we had several cow bones and a few other animal bones, but no human bones. Brown has the option to end the project with honor at that time, but she decided to continue. She processed an additional 1,500 Denisova bone samples, which were subsequently sent to Manchester. The outcomes were noticeably different this time. The origin of one bone was determined to be human. We found it hard to believe it truly worked. Doka enthuses, it was great. Brown was also ecstatic, it was very thrilling. Along with demonstrating that the method is effective, we also discovered a hominid. The squad was ecstatic with the news, but a crucial piece of information was absent from their findings. Yes, they had discovered a person, but whose species was it? Only the hominida family of great apes and humans, including Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, may be identified by Zooms as the source of a bone. It is unable to make distinctions within this group. Svant Pabo of the Leipzig-based Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, whose team had sequenced the first Denisovan genome in 2010, was contacted to learn more. Initial examination revealed that the bone was at least 50,000 years old, and that its deceased owner was at least 13 years old. The Leipzig team then started doing a more in-depth genomic investigation and found an unexpected finding under the direction of Pabo's student. The sample's Neanderthal DNA made up exactly half of the total. Denisovan DNA made up the other half. The researchers first believed that the material was tainted. Retesting, however, supported the Oxford team's discovery that the 90,000-year-old bones belonged to a hybrid descendant of a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father. Denny was her nickname. It was exceptional to find a first-generation individual of mixed heritage, but there were still more facts to learn. Further in-depth analyses of Denny's Denisovan father's genes revealed the presence of Neanderthal DNA fragments. These suggested that prior interbreeding between the two species had also taken place. There is no doubt, according to previous research, that Neanderthals and modern humans interbred with one another, as well as with Denisovans. There is now compelling evidence of Denisovan and Neanderthal mixing owing to zooms, which has now been used to identify additional ancient human remains. However, why Denisova? One hypothesis is that the cave marks a border outpost for both species, one that was located at the very western extremity of the homelands of the Denisovans and eastern species and at the very eastern end of the Neanderthals' territory, which was largely in Europe. On occasion, members of both groups would enter the cave simultaneously, leading to amorous outcomes. Studies of Denny's Neanderthal mother in-depth support this theory. Her genes exhibit a particularly strong affinity for Croatian Neanderthals, indicating that Denny's mother's immediate ancestors may have been a part of a group that slowly migrated east from Europe towards Denisova, where she came into contact with Denny's father on the outskirts of their respective homelands. Although much more evidence is needed to validate it, the image is fascinating. Although there is no concrete proof that the Denisovans' homeland was primarily to the east of the cave, the discovery of their genes in populations in Australia, New Guinea, and other parts of Oceania lends support to this theory and suggests that future site-finding efforts should concentrate on eastern Russia, China, and Southeast Asia. Ancient human relics that were formerly stored in Asian museums might be one potential source of fossils. According to academics, they could really be Denisovans and have been mislabeled. Unfortunately, obtaining these specimens for samples has proven to be challenging. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the discovery of the ancient hybrid girl, whose parents were two different species. If you found this video interesting, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting insights into the latest discoveries in science and technology.